Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching, we're in Ecstatics and as you guys can see from my last two videos and today we are working now with my iPad so I, what I want you guys to do is that please comment down below on the videos which method do you like more when I was over there in my whiteboard or with the iPad okay so let's go ahead and work with this problem that is 687 and it says determine the forces of the jaws J of the metal cutters exert on the smooth cable C if 100 Newton forces are applied to the handles. The jaws are pinned at E, so they're pinning here, at A, at D, at B, and also at F, okay? So we solve a seeming, really similar problem in my last video, so what we're going to do right now is that we're going to go just ahead and solve for this problem. We, um, and we will see how we solve it while we are doing it okay so the first thing that we have to do is that we're going to separate and draw two free body diagrams the first one is for this part over here that we're going to call free body diagram and then I'm gonna call it right side okay so this is our part I'm going to expand it a little bit just so we have a better view of it then we will have a hundred newtons going down on this side okay and then it's telling us that it has an angle of 15 degrees with respect to the normal of this line so this is the normal so and this angle in here is 15 degrees okay now what else do we have well we're told that this is pin at a and also at f so these pins we gotta remove them by two forces the force that in it pin f in the x and one in the y and same thing on a okay so let's start with f we'll have f x we'll have f y then we'll have a y and then i'm gonna draw ax in this case going to my left so this is my free first free body diagram so as i said before we're going to do two of them so if we're going to do two of them what we have to do is take the draw i'm just gonna copy the shape of our next free body diagram and then i'm going to call it free body diagram and this is my left side okay so we're gonna take this guy let's expand a little bit just so we have a little bit more room to write on and then the main goal of this problem is to find what force this thing is applying into the cable seat that we're only seeing the cross-sectional of it so the same force that we're applying on C, C has to return it into the part. So by knowing that, we will draw a force going up that is going to be force C. Okay, at point E, we have a pin connection of a member that is pin connected to the other side. So we're going to have at point E also a force in the direction of the force member. And we're going to call it F E D. Okay. The last thing that we have is this pin connection in here at A. So the pin connection at A, we already draw it on the right side and it, it, it was given by these directions. So on my left side, it has to have the opposite directions in order to be uh, in, in equilibrium. So I'm going to draw a Y going down and AX going to my right. Okay. So since our main goal is to find FC, let's see what we can, which equations we can get on this free body diagram on the left side, okay? So let's just start with the summatory of forces in the X direction. And what do I have? I'm going to assume that going to the right is positive. So I have AX, and then that's all. This should be equal to zero. So that way, we know that AX is equal to zero. Uh, if we apply a summatory of moment around my point E, 
what will happen is that if we do it about my point E, let's remember that this is point C, this is my point E, and my point A. What will happen is that if as I'm holding here, we don't care about this force. So, and since AX is zero, all I will be carrying is AY in order to solve for this guy. So I think that's a good approach. So assuming that going counterclockwise is positive, what do we what will we have? Well, holding here, these four want to rotate me clockwise, therefore we will have negative FC multiplied by the distance. What's the distance between point E and my point Z? We can see it here is 30 millimeters. So we're gonna multiply by 30 millimeters. Okay. Now holding here and this going like this will try to rotate my part clockwise again. So we'll have AY multiplied by 80 millimeters. Okay, so we'll have 80 millimeters. And all this should be equal to zero. Since we know this, uh, but we don't know AY, we know the equation, but since we don't know AY, we cannot solve for FC. So what we can do is that we're going to use this right side free body diagram that I'm going to copy and move down here. And we're going to try to find the value of FY, okay? And the best way of finding FY from this free body diagram, as we can see, is by canceling these FX and FY. How do we how can we cancel those? Well, we apply the moment around my point F, okay? And we also know that AX is equal to zero. So basically we can just erase it. So we're going to do the summatory of moment around my point F. We're still assuming that going counterclockwise is positive. And what do we have? Well, we will have our force AY. Now if I'm holding like this and then this part wants to go like that, then it will create me a negative A1 um, multiplied by the distance. Well, let's see what is this distance. So this distance from point A and point F, so from here to here, we have that it's 20 millimeters. Now the problem is that it's not exactly about my Y axis. So if we were to draw a similar triangle in here, going like this, and then going to A, and then going like this, we can we can redraw this triangle a little bit better at the bottom. But we know that the angle is 20, uh, 15. So the angle is 15, and the size is equal to 20 millimeters. Okay. So let's draw that triangle like this. That goes like that. knowing that this is my point F, this is my point A, and we're also given that this is 15 degrees, and this is 20 millimeters, then we can figure out how much is this distance, because AY is going like this, okay? So, how much will that distance be? Well, this distance will be 20 millimeters, we have 20 millimeters multiplied by the sine of my 15 degrees. Okay? So this triangle should look a little bit more like this. So that's why we are able to do that since it's a really small angle. Now, what else do we have? Well, we have, we have these 100 newtons. Now, what happens with these 100 newtons is that we can decompose it into two different forces. The first force, it can be decomposed like this, and the other one going like this. Why do we want to decompose this force like this? We want to decompose it because our, our member, our part, is 15 degrees rotated like this. So what we will see is that the force going in this direction will have this small distance and our force that is going, I'm sorry, in this direction, so going perpendicular to this, will have the total distance of 
400 that we can see in here okay now so let's do that if we break that we will know that if the entire hypotenuse so let me redraw this in a better way this is the hypotenuse and then we will have 100 newtons the one that is going in the same direction as our par so we know that our hypotenuse is this one which is 100 and this angle is 15 degrees then this one over here will be 100 multiplied by the sine of 15 and this one over here will be 100 cosine of 15 okay so knowing that let's just start with this guy over here so now this guy over here is going towards my left if I want to put if I'm holding here and then I want to go like this this part wants to rotate counterclockwise so I'm gonna have a positive 100 multiplied by sine of 15 degrees multiplied by the distance which is going to be this, this 20 millimeters that is given in here okay so we multiply this by 20 and then the other part of this force that we have is this one going down like this so if I'm holding here it will want to try to rotate my part clockwise and so we'll have a negative so we'll have negative 100 cosine of 15 degrees multiply by how much is this part which is 400 newtons as uh, 400 millimeters as I said before so 400 millimeters okay all this should be equal to zero if we solve for a y meaning that I'm going to move this guy from the other side of the equal sign we will have a hundred sine of 15 degrees multiplied by 20 minus a hundred cosine of 15 degrees multiplied by 400 all divided by 20 multiplied by my sine of 15 degrees and that come from the coefficient of a y okay so let's plug that into the calculator and let's see what we got so we're gonna plug all these numbers we're gonna have a hundred sine of 15 multiplied by 20 minus 100 cosine of 15 times 400 all divided by 20 sine of 15 and this will give me a total of negative 7364 newtons okay so we found a y which is what we wanted in order to find fc in here okay so now that we found a y i'm going to move this a little bit down so we can keep on working on here and if we solve for fc what will we have so we solve for fc is negative so if we move it to the other side will become positive and we'll have negative a y multiplied by 80 divided by 30 okay so this is negative we have a negative outside and then negative from a y which is 7364 multiplied by 80 all divided by 30 what is this equal to so we're going to multiply by this by 80 divided by 30 and this will give us an answer of 19 1637 newtons okay so if we apply a little bit of significant figures we can just say that this is equal to 19.6 kilonewtons and this will be the answer for this problem thank you guys for watching if you like the video please push the like button and subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one